Okay, this is a demonstration on how to take uh, an assignment from Google Classroom and then uh, import um, a bunch of data from that assignment into a Google spreadsheet, a Google Sheet, uh, and then using a tool called Doctopus, which is an add-on for Sheets, and another um, Chrome extension called Gubrick. And the, these two tools, Doctopus and Gubrick, together uh, really a great combination of tools um, to make uh, marking uh, quite an easy and it make, makes marking um, a lot of assignments uh, quite easy and it also a great way for giving students uh, feedback on on assignments so here's an assignment that I've got uh, in Google Classroom it was a close reading assignment for an English about reading a piece of non-fiction text I've had 19 people have turned this assignment so in so far and I would like to mark um, these assignments. So my first thing is to go to my Google Drive, and I've been I've done a few of these for some similar tasks. And I'm going to create this this the spreadsheet to start off with. So I just create a brand new spreadsheet. Um, I'm going to give it a name. Let's say non-fiction close reading. And then using uh, the Doctopus add-on, which I'm not going to show you how to install at this point. There's some other videos out there on how to install this. Um, uh, it's under, that will appear under my add-ons tab, and I'm going to launch the program. And it should appear shortly to the right here. I'll get another frame in my browser window um, called Doctopus. And here's where I'm going um, to I'm going to start importing this particular assignment so it needs I it asked me to select a roster um, the only one I'm interested at this point is uh, is using Google Classroom to uh, has, has got a list of all the students and so I'm going to pull down this tab and I'm going to select the ingest Google Classroom assignment it's um, it's gone to my Google Classroom it's brought back a list of all the classes that I'm teaching that are in Google Classroom and I want to select uh, the English class and from here, it'll give me a list of all the assignments that have been um, that I've that I've assigned to that class. So I'm going to look for the close reading assignment. It's the one I want to mark. And now this tool, Doctopus, will go away and it will collect a lot of data from the folder that that assignment is in and import it into a spreadsheet. And there's quite a bit of information that you could even just get from that spreadsheet. It'll have the name of the student, the email of the student. Um, it also has um, a link to the actual assignment itself. As I and the date that it was turned in, and things like that. As I attach the um, the next step, which is to um, attach the Gubrick. Um, aspect to it and as I start marking it, it it collects a lot more information now the Gubrick extension what that does is that is a um, allows me to and you'll see how it works when I when I walk you through it but what it does is it it allows me to attach a marking rubric to the actual assignment itself um, and this is very handy because while I'm marking them I can see the rubric uh, as well um, but it also it also gives me a place for um, supplying feedback and it then attaches both the feedback and the marking rubric to the document itself. It actually modifies the document and sends it back to the student with with both of those things in it. So it has found that uh, 38 files have been turned in for this assignment. Um, it says only ingest files that are turned in. I'm not quite, I thought they would, that's the only ones that it had seems to have found anyway but I'm going to ingest this assignment this can take a little while now as it goes away and processes all of this um, all of this data and what it does it actually for some reason it, it creates a brand new sheet um, which is a copy of your spreadsheet down the bottom you get these tabs so now I've got sheet one and then I've got ingested from from classroom close reading how that was the name of the assignment um, down there and that's where all this data will come into once it's once it's done all of its processing can take a little while um, so now I've got um, all my assignments have been uh, there was in this particular assignment there were two pieces of work for each student so I've got two it shows me two pieces 
it also shows me a link here to the actual uh, assignment itself and the date that it was last edited. It seems as you start marking these things and attaching the rubric, um, rubric part of the this uh, process to it you get a lot more information as well as you've marked it you get um i'll show you a little bit of that later on my next step then is to actually attach the gubric which is actually just a rubric uh to these assignments so if i click this attach gubric button here i should get a list of recent rubrics that i've created and used using this tool um, i can also access my google drive um, I haven't used these this libraries function yet, but I have already created a, uh, a rubric for this that I used for a previous marking of a similar assignment. So I'm going to attach that rubric to this assignment. Now the rubrics are easy to make. They're um, a Google spreadsheet, uh, and there's a simple format for them. They can be numeric uh, to give you a, a, a number score. They can be non-numeric, which is what I'm using. Um, there are some templates that are available <laughs> through the Gubric tool itself. Um, so now my Gubric has been attached to my um, to the assignments that I inge had ingested using Doctopus. I've got another tab here, but there's no information on it at the moment because I haven't actually done any of the marking so the easiest way to actually do this marking for me you can go <coughs> through your um, Google Drive um, and go to the classrooms folder and find the uh, the assignments that way there's it, every time you do an assignment in Google classroom it creates a folder uh, that has all the assignments in it you could open them up that way I tend to just click on them here um, and then there's a little link there to the assignment now it's opened up as a document so there's the assignment that's been turned in so the next step is once you've added the Gubric um, plugin for Chrome you get this little icon up here and if I click on that it opens up the um, I don't actually need this one now it opens up the document and it gives me two panes along the top where it will put my rubric so here's my rubric um, along the top I had a non-achieved, achieved, merit um, and an excellence um, criteria if I click on the area uh, that will actually give that mark is that's actually telling the student that that's the mark that I've given them so I've given them a merit mark uh, and I can also make comments here um, for the student I think I actually might have already marked this one that's why there was something there but so I would add comments in here um, for the student you can also use these options up here to record audio uh, I haven't tried that yet I haven't um, haven't given any um, any oral feedback uh, like that yet so I haven't used that tool um, you can also, the document is is uh, just a normal Google document, so you can add comments in uh, like you usually can. You could change this from editing to make suggestions as well. Um, but I tend to, f uh, tend to put in the majority of my comments uh, in this comment section up here, because those get sent to the student as well. Um, there's a couple of options here. you got also email scores to the student which is I keep that checked by default change students from can view to can comment on submit I think what that is saying is I don't actually understand that one I need to check that one out um, that may have something to do with the fact that Google Classroom changes the sharing permissions once students have turned in their document I'm not sure how that would impact actually how it works on with the Google Classroom um, this this system was around before Classroom was existed existed and you had to sort of manually ingest things maybe and, and I think it might have changed the uh, sharing settings but I've actually had that one checked as well auto advance on submit means that once I've, I've hit submit 
I'll go to the next assignment so I can be marking a lot of assignments uh, at a time. And what this does, I'm not going to do this at the moment because it would sort of send off an email to that student. Actually, maybe if I... Um, but... Um, no, I'm not going to do that. But um, <coughs> once I've um, hit submit, it sends an email to the student uh, with the comments and the mark. It sends and a link back to their document. And then what it does is it actually takes this... Um, entire rubric here it edits it and adds it to the it adds it to the bottom of their document so it actually edits their document it adds the rubric itself to the bottom and the comments um, that you've made in this area to the document itself for students um, I'll show you one that I've already done just so you can get a little bit of a uh, uh, an idea of the kind of information that comes out of, of the spreadsheet. So this is a spreadsheet for one that I'd done earlier using the Doctopus add-on and the Gubrick and it ingested the pretty much the same class uh, but once I had done the uh, once you've done the rubric itself the Gubrick marks it gives you a separate sheet which has all your comments on the right um, in a little bit of more of a tidier fashion but it also modifies your original Doctopus she gives you a lot more information. It gives you the information about the word count of the document, how many revisions the student made, how many comments were added by the teacher, uh, student comments, peer comments, um, written feedback, etc. So there's quite a bit of information even from just the Doctopus plugin itself. Um, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, uh, leave a question in the comment section or get in touch with me. Um, have fun with these uh, these three tools: Google Classroom, Doctopus, and Gubrick.